Hello viewer, welcome back to the mental health program. My name is Florida Afifu and I take you through this series that brings us awareness and empowers us to be able to sustain and maintain good mental health. Today we are going to talk about stress and we are going to talk about stress without distress. This is going to be a two-part series. The first one is about stress and understanding stress and the effect of stress in our body and in our mind. The next episode on stress is going to handle how well we can manage stress in our lives so that we are able to minimize the harmful effects of stress and be able to remain functional even when confronted with stressful situations. So today as we start, let us understand what is stress. Because stress is a fact of life. Wherever you are, whatever you do, stress is almost a constant. Stress involves the changes in our lives that range from the routine changes like commuting from home to work, going to school, and handling pressures at school, to much major changes in life, such as losing a loved ones, marriage, divorce. And so it's not possible to avoid stress because in one way or another, we all go through changes in our lives. Stress is a way in which we act physically and psychologically to the different changes and events in our lives. People experience stress differently and for different reasons. And difference is because of how we perceive a situation in our lives. If I perceive a situation as negative, then my stress would be that of distress. And physico physically, physiologically, and mentally, I will experience distress. And that will be seen even in my body and the changes in my body. However, if I perceive a situation as positive, then my reaction still of stress may not be of distress. It will be a reaction that probably enables me to rise up to the challenge and take up a task to resolve that positive stressor. Distress is the most common form of stress. The other form of stress is positive stress, otherwise referred to as eustress. Eustress is stress that we view from a positive perspective. It is the stress that helps us to rise up to a challenge and it can be an antidote to boredom because it engages us to focus energies to, uh, to achieving our goals, to carrying out our tasks and, and to completion. This energy can easily turn into distress, especially if something causes us to, do, to view this situation as unmanageable or out of control. So what are some of the common causes of stress? The most frequent reasons for stressing out can be looked at in three main categories. The first one is the unsettling effect of change. Change is with us each and every day. It could be change that involves traveling from one place to another, or it could be change that involves taking up a new task in your workplace. It could be change about taking up new units in the new semester at school. Any type of change brings an unsettling effect in our, bo in, in our minds, and this can be stressful. Another reason or another dimension is the feeling that an outward force is challenging us or threatening us. For example, when you're taking a walk probably late in the night or traveling night, or when you're traveling to a place that is a high-risk area, or working a place that is a, 
is a high-risk place, then you'd be feeling that there are situations outside in your environment that are challenging you or threatening you. A good example is in the, in, in the events of war, if you're living in a place of war. Or maybe in the family, if you're dealing with a spouse who is violent or abusive of any, in any way then you might find yourself stressed because you feel threatened and you feel that the outside uh, environment is not safe for you. The third dimension of looking at the causes of stress is the feeling that you have lost control. And we can think about situations of illnesses. When one is unwell, you start by doing uh, interventions, probably at home, and you go for hospital intervention, you get medication, and when you feel that you are out of control, that no matter what you do, you are not getting better or feeling better, then this too can be a source of stress. Life events, such as marriage, changing jobs, Divorce or death of a relative are the most common causes of stress. Although life-threatening events are less common, they can be the most physiologically and psychologically acute in terms of the effects of stress in our bodies. And these life-threatening events are mostly an experience of those who are working in Wharton areas, of those who are working, for example, in the police, when they are exposed to traumatic events, when they have to deal with probably an accident or a homicide, and they are exposed to gory scenes of, of, of pain and hurt that other people have gone through. Sometimes their very lives are also threatened. Our emergency relief workers are also exposed to life-threatening events. Take, for example, a counseling psychologist who is offering support to people probably in a refugee camp, interacting daily with the terrible experiences, the painful experiences of the people in the refugee camps can affect a worker in a, in a, in a very intense way, psychologically, thereby causing stress. Some other common causes of stress include increased academic uh, demands, being on your own in a new environment. You probably got a job or got admission to a school out of the country. It becomes stressful to be on your own and to try building relationships all over again in a faraway place from home. Changes in family relations. And, so, and, and your social life. And these changes could be as, uh, as good as having a new member of the family when you have a baby, or having a difficult relationship with someone who initially you enjoyed a cordial relationship with. Financial responsibilities or financial difficulties can also be sources of stresses. When you're not able to meet your financial obligations, especially as a parent, as a provider of the family, then that brings considerable stress to your body. Of course, exposure to new people, to new ideas, depending on the perspective that you give the new ideas, the new people and, 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 and your expectations, then you might experience some form of stress. Of course, there are so many causes of stress that we might not list it all. But as I said earlier, stress affects us differently and the ways that the stress affects us depends on our perspectives, our experiences, and our situations. So how will I know or how will you know that you are stressed? How does stress manifest symptomatically in our bodies? When stress some people might feel uh, fatigue, unexplainable fatigue. You have not done much in the day, 
You have not done much in the night, but for some reason you wake up and you're very tired and unable to take on your day's work. Headaches can also be a symptom of, of stress, especially if the headaches that are not explained are not caused by any form of illnesses. Gastrointestinal problems, unsettled feeling in your stomach could also be as a result of stress, anxiety that comes as a result of the stress that you're experiencing. And also increased blood pressure, palpitations where your heart beats rapidly, inability to focus, or lack of concentration. You're probably doing something, but you find yourself absent-minded. You're probably in class, but you find yourself not with the lecturer or with your teacher. Sleep disturbances. Stress may cause us to sleep more or sleep less than usual. So when you realize that your sleep patterns are changing, then probably it's because of stress. Anxiety, and to some extent, some sexual problems could be ways in which stress in our bodies and our mind manifest. Our body's response to stress is carefully organized to help us escape from danger or escape from other situations. A sudden reaction to stress can be described as a flight or fight response. When we are confronted to sudden stress, for example, confronted to danger or confronted to, to maybe some form of abuse, when we feel that we are being mishandled, probably on the roads, when you take a matatu and your, the, the, the matatu uh, conductor is not kind or is treating you unfairly, our sudden response is always meant to protect us from the adversities that confront us. And it is calculated to help us survive in an imminent situation of danger. Our reaction to stress is predictable and progressive. The first stage when we are confronted with a sudden stressor is the stage that we would refer to as an alarm reaction stage. This is the place where the body calls to arms, calls the resources of the body and the mind to be able to respond to a stressor. And then we move on to the reaction stage, the, st the, 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 the state of resistance where now we respond to the stressor. And the response is either in terms of a fight or a flight. You might respond by wanting to contend to the stressor. Other times, we respond by running away from the stressor. And then, depending on how long we are exposed to the stress, we may end up in the exhaustion stage. And the exhaustion stage is a state that occurs when the stress situation has been prolonged over time. For example, when we are talking about stresses in our job places or marital conflict, stresses that are brought about due to financial demands, and other stressors that linger for long. The phase of exhaustion happens when stress persists and when it continues for long, disease or even death may result. So what are some of the physical effects of a sudden stressor? When you are confronted with the stress on the real time, what are some of the physical effects? One is increased blood pressure. And blood pressure increases so that blood can be pumped faster 
to the active muscles of our bodies to enable us fight or to enable us flee from the sudden stressor. There's also increased heart rate responding to the need for increased blood supply. There's also increased heart contractions, dilated pupils, dilated bronchial tubes to allow passage of air to enable our bodies to fight or to fly, to flee. There is increased muscular strength. The stronger and rapid heartbeat, the increased blood pressure is so that our muscles can get the strength that our muscles need to fight or to enable us run away from our stressor or from danger. There is increased release of blood, of glucose from the, from, from the liver so that our blood sugar levels are higher. Mental activity to enable us make quick considerations of our situations and judgments to act is also increased. And there's increased blood supply to active muscles. There's a decreased flow of blood to areas that are not needed for physical activities, such as the kidneys and the intestines. And of course, there is increase of the tendency of blood to clot, just in case there would be bleeding in whatever confronts us. These changes come as a result of, of several glands that increase their output of stress hormones. And this is, 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 is signaled by the nervous system that picks the interactions from our environment and signals the glands to release more hormones so that our, bodies is well, our body and mind is well enabled to deal with the stressor. The main objective of these complex works in the human system is to be able to, to, to enable us to, 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 enable us to, re to respond adequately to emergencies in our lives, to enable us to flight, to fight or to run away from imminent danger. This response is sudden. It is intense, but it is meant to be temporary. It is meant to help us in the moment, and then the body is supposed to go back to a state of equilibrium, to a state of rest. When it is sudden, it is intense and temporary, it is beneficial to us. But when stress is prolonged over time, these beneficial changes in our body then turn up to be very harmful and can cause intense um, health issues in us. So in the event of a prolonged stress, in the event that stress lingers long, then our ch the, stress, the changes that stress brings in our bodies linger long and they turn to be destructive in our lives. The nervous system help and the help of the hormones that is supposed to protect us then change to bring ultimate destruction in our bodies in forms of diseases and also in form of, uh, of, of death, stress could result in death. So what are some of the effects of persistent stress? And I'm going to talk about the effects of persistent stress in our bodies, physically, emotionally, and socially. So what happens to us physically? When our blood pressure remains high as a result of stress, when there are high levels of stress hormones in our bodies because of stress, when the tendency of blood flow to clot remains sustained over a long period of time as a result of stress, when we are constantly in the mode of fight or flight, what happens? First, I would like to address the issue of diabetes. For people who are diabetic, when stress levels are sustained, 
there is a sustained stimulation of the release of the stress hormones. Then there is a consistent, a, a maintained high blood, high, high sugar levels in the blood. And this aggravates their diabetes. And of course, this can also see an onset of diabetes in an individual. Sustained high levels of sugar in the blood can result to damage of the kidneys, amputations of our limbs, heart attacks, strokes, and sometimes loss of sight. In the case of diseases of the arteries in the heart, sustained levels of stress in the body can result in sudden death. When there is a higher level of, of, of blood uh, circulation, when the blood pressure is high, and this cannot be supported with healthy arteries that allows the blood to pass through our bodies, then it could be fatal due to the narrow passage in the arteries, sometimes leading to stroke and even heart attack. Increased blood pressure can have fatal results. Increased blood pressure can also lead in, 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 in loss of, of, of pregnancies and other complications in the body. Prolonged stress also increases the tendencies of our blood platelets to clot. And this clotting can be devastating in the cases of deceased arteries. The high levels of stress hormone, cortisol, in the blood is destructive to our body in so many ways. High levels of, co of cortisol can be negatively impactful to our brains. The brain can become astonishingly altered by extreme levels of stress due to the high levels of stress hormones in our body. And this would manifest, manifest as difficulty in thinking logically, problem with memories, decreased verbal fluency, and lack of concentration. There are conditions that can either find their onset with stress or can be aggravated with stress, such as dementia, substance use, or any form of addiction, food aversion or anorexia, depression can find its onset with stress or be aggravated with a stressful situation, panic, anxiety, impaired memories, and in some instances, shrinkage of the brain. High levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone, also weakens our immune system in two ways. One is elevated blood sugar levels. When our blood sugar levels are high, then our immune system is compromised. High levels of cortisol also affect our immune system by disabling some, uh, some white blood cells from killing bacteria. Other damages caused by high levels of the stress hormones in the body include um, peptic ulcers, hypertension, suppressed immunity, malnutrition, and of course, chronic active alcoholism. Stress also aggravates certain conditions in our lives. It aggravates certain illnesses in our lives. Studies have shown that when somebody is suffering from a chronic illness, when their levels of stress are high, their quality of living is compromised considerably. Stress can aggravate asthmatic attacks. Stress can aggravate um, conditions such as eczema and irritable bowel syndromes. In reproductive health, Stress increases certain hormones 
that impair fertility, especially in men. Stress increases the chances for, uh, uh, of pregnancy complications in pregnant women. Stress increases the chances of having children with different birth defects. And of course, stress increases the chances of having premature deliveries. Emotionally, stress causes us to continually have the feeling of ongoing tension, fear, impatience, irritability, and inferior feelings. Socially, because of how we are feeling emotionally, stress causes us to have different um, relationships. And we can experience difficulty in our relationships because of how we are responding to the people depending on what is going on inside of us. So as we come to a conclusion today, stress affects us physically in our body, stress affects us in our mind, and stress affects us even spiritually. The effects of stress can bring disease to us. Stress can be fatal if unmanaged. In the right amounts, stress, especially the youth stress or the positive stress, can be a source of motivation that enables us to rise up to our daily challenges and achieve our goals. But when the limit of adequate stress is surpassed, then there's an important point to underscore. That is, stress is destructive to our health, and stress can lead to death. And therefore, it is very important that we focus our energies First, to accept the positive nature of stress, but most importantly, to do all that we can as individuals and families and members of the community to ensure that stress is kept at the right levels and prolonged stress is managed in the right way so that the adverse effects may not be our experiences and may not be experiences of the people that are around us. There's always something that can be done to manage stress. And in our next segment, we are going to look at what then shall we do so that we can reduce the harmful effects of stress considerably, so that we can live healthy and functional lives even in the face of stressful situations in our lives. That's it from us today. We look forward to meeting you next time as we continue with the subject of stress without distress. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Same place.